I've been using your um, um, memory uh, reporting stuff for the last couple of days to try and track down a memory leak. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very useful. So today we have, we're trying to talk about uh, Microsoft Theaterverse. It's a new concept that uh, has come out uh, recently. I've actually scratched that. It's not a new concept. It's CVS that was renamed Theaterverse. Microsoft and its wisdom continues to uh, rename things because uh, apparently when you, every time they hire an MBA and the marketing department, uh, <laughs> they wanted to rename things. Now it's called Dataverse. So I'm going to I'm going to share my screen with you guys here, and uh, basically what this is is just the uh, uh, common data, and I can't remember what the S stands for, but uh, common data. It used to be called first called common data model, now it's called data, common data. Now it's called dataverse. I'm going to share this link with you guys here in the chat. Let me bring up the chat so you can follow along later on if you want to. So um, I've touched base in prior presentations, and what I want to do here is just emphasize what you're getting here with the Dataverse. And uh, we were lucky enough to participate in the beta trials for uh, the Power Raster teams. And uh, I recently wrote out where now you can create these web-based power apps with inside your team's um, uh, domain. Uh, not just yours, but your clients can also now create uh, applications within web applications within uh, teams, which are drag and drop. And it uh, was really uh, quite the advent for us to be able to participate in the trials and provide feedback. And now uh, they've gone live with this since we were from so weeks ago. Hi, right, bye, Klaus. Sorry, the chance to take off. One to two forty-five. So, um, you know, one of the things that you get with DataVerse uh, before CBS is the how robust the uh, application can be and how self-managed the whole process is. Uh, these applications can quickly scale for thousands of users, and you don't have to do anything. Microsoft takes care of the whole thing in terms of being able to uh, provide you with the uh, infrastructure at $10 a user. And uh, now, of course, it's not $10 a user, but rather it's free if you use Power Apps for Teams. Has anybody tried using the... Uh, Power app for Teams. Lately, has anybody tried to create a Power app at all? I wouldn't be surprised. It's fairly, fairly new. We're going to walk you through how to get uh, how to do that. So, um, you know, this whole um, dataverse. It used to be that when I wanted to create a web app, I had to go to Azure. And uh, when we first started out, as we started out, you have to create a uh, web server, and then you have to install the app on the web server. So you needed to create the virtual machine in Azure, and the virtual machine had to be so much so powerful in order to be able to run your app for multiple users. And if you think of a startup that uh, grows quickly, right? For example, uh, we have uh, a recent startup, which is uh, the one that does a short 20-second videos. What is that? Uh, TikTok. So you got TikTok, right? When TikTok took off, the amount of infrastructure that you need to be able to support the massive use of millions of users around the world. And the old days, uh, before we had uh, serverless apps and other new classes that came on, such as Kent containers and Azure, you had to purchase uh, all this vast hardware uh, and, and uh, Azure with VMs and servers and uh, the regulators and uh, listening for listening uh, machines, all that's out the window now. Well, now you have serverless applications that allows the application team to be able to just focus on the app, upload the app, and then Azure automatically um, provides the resources to 
integration, the patching, everything for you automatically in the background. That's uh, just an amazing platform that allows you to quickly scale web apps <coughs> and, um, and arcade power apps. Now, uh, I got a kick out of it because Microsoft loves to say uh, low code development. And uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, worked on the GPU uh, and now in cars itself. Oh. Yeah, can you create a power app without code? Yes, you can. But in order to leverage it, uh, it really requires knowing the uh, syntax and language of power apps. So you don't have VBA, you still don't have a formal programming language. It's more like a um, access macro language, right? If this and that, uh, if nested ifs, double ifs our the language, and uh, it has its own data model, algebra model that you have to know in order to leverage it completely considerably. So it's just uh, just a uh, wide range of things that you need to know in order to really leverage it, but it's still worthwhile. And this is the key, right? Fully managed experience. The fully management experience is what the person will provide you with that ability to focus on the app and not have to worry about increasing the infrastructure at all or backups or anything like that. Uh, we are, um, we host data, I've mentioned this in the chats before, we host data for our clients around the U.S. Um, in Azure and uh, we're going to be migrating them to Elastic Pools and I was talking to my implementation team and I'll be able to migrate over to pools. And one of the things that I, can, uh, I mentioned was backups. So we have a three-day backup retention policy and how does backup works. And basically uh, what it is, it's just it's not taking care of for us. We just we can do an up to the minute restore of our backups. And we don't have to do anything. We just go into the portal and say, okay, restore from this date. What's the name of the database you want to restore to? Bam, it's done. There's no need to do the log shifting and uh, uh, import the logs from the prior pool backup. It's all taken care of for you. <laughs> Completely automated. All right, let's see. So now it's called Data Whisper, Data Whisper 14. I, I miss Miss Power as a team. I think, I think they, miss, they mismanaged. They call it now Data Whisper Teams. So you can, we're going to go through this process, creating your first table, getting the Power Apps up and running, customizing and publish your app. We're going to talk a little bit about that. All right. So I wanted to just show you this stuff as opposed to uh, showing this. So this is my teams here, and uh, I wanted to give you a couple of things, uh, a couple of pointers. Number one is uh, we recently made the jump to uh, Teams from Slack, and I kind of really like it. Um, you can pin conversations, I mean, channels up here, and so quickly go to different channels. And the way we set this up is we have an active project channels with our clients here, and then we have a client center where we invite our clients to participate. Not every client has a channel. Not every client wants to chat with us in Teams, but those who do, they have a channel in their Teams. Then we have an internal IT impact channel where we have uh, General channel will be coming and say, good morning. So the general channel is our water cooler. And in the morning, say good morning. We go AFK for lunch or AFK 15 minutes. When we go, we either leave for AFK for the day. Uh, today, I um, had praise for our sales uh, department. That's the with of our sales department. I had praise because we have three meetings with new, with new customers today. So that was uh, that was great. So I just should praise for that. But uh, one tip, one quick tip I want to give you a control period, and you'll see all the shortcuts that are available in keyboard shortcuts for teams. But remember that control period of your teams, you need to use these shortcuts. I found this pretty useful. The other thing is control G to go to a channel, right? So here I can say random, and I can go to my random channel. We use a random channel for uh, holiday photos, uh, jokes, and, you know, just to create that sense of, I'm all here with my employees of all the world. As you know, I have a big level. I have employees on three continents, North America, South America, and Europe. So we use this to uh, to bring the group together. So we use that uh, we use that uh, random channel for vacation photos and stuff like that. 
All right, so if you haven't done this, what you want to do is you want to go to Power Auto and Auto, uh, Power, Power Apps. If you click on the Apps button here in Teams, and something you want to look out for is when you do the Power Apps, is I'm going to type Power Apps here, is the preview. So it's called Power Apps Preview, right? There's a regular Power Apps that costs you $10 a month, which you can get free preview for a host of these. I get it to pay $10. You want the preview app. Now, one thing, we, one thing we found out uh, the hard way is that when you create a Power App and assign it to a channel, you can, uh, to a team, excuse me, you can no longer move that Power App anywhere else. So we created a Power App and uh, we had to recreate it for another channel. So hopefully it will change as we can import Power Apps going forward. Somebody had a question? That's somebody was going to ask a question. All right. So um, we created these uh, power apps, and um, just keep that in mind. When you assign a power app to a channel, it's going to stay in that channel. You don't be able to move it around. All right, so I'm going to create a new app here. And now here, remember I said set the team. So this is a crucial step because if you're not careful, you'll end up uh, creating a power app in the wrong channel. Now, the first time you do this, it actually takes several minutes because it's setting up all the backend infrastructure in Azure, the SQL Server, the uh, 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 app management layer, everything. Now it's a, a little bit faster than this. So I'm just gonna call this a test app. Actually, I was working with an insurance company client of ours, so I wanna just, let's just do that. So I want, uh, uh, I'm going to call it application. Let's see, we created a power app for them to take uh, applications over the phone with somebody calling, say, I want our insurance, and when you are out insurance, you need to know the VIN number, the car, and so forth. So we started working on the application today. So I'm going to create my first table. When I create my first table, something happens there, like somebody calls in for an application or a lead, so I'm going to call this lead table. I'm going to create that. Now I've got the ability to add columns for my table. Now this first column is a text column. You can't change it. You know how we, the, uh, the, 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 the propensity is access developers to start our tables with lead ID, which I'm going to add eventually here. But for now, I'm just going to edit this first column. And it won't let you change the text on this at all. So I'm going to follow this last name. And then uh, first name. Now there's several uh, data types that you can leverage here, unlike access, which is limited. And there's even more data types. I'm going to show you where you're at later in a second here. Uh, middle name. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring up uh, lead ID, which is going to be my auto number. So there is the auto number type, but notice the different types you have here. You got email, URL, phone, date, decimal, choice, yes, no. Very similar to Microsoft Access. And there's actually even more data types when you go to the um, data designer, which I'll show you in a second here. So I'm going to call this an auto number. So then you will call it your address one, address two, city, state, zip, and all that. So we'll click on close here. And now I've got my first table. Um, so, um, when I go here to uh, leads, it uh, automatically creates this, this, this form for me with the fields on it, right? And this is a, its attempt to automatically create the form. Uh, and then, um, but you can modify that, of course. All right, so here in the, um, the sidebar, you have this uh, table view. And uh, excuse me, not table view, tree view. You can have your Teams app and the screen one, which is the one that was created automatically. And then you have the database here. So you have the leads. And here I can click on the edit data. And I can go back in there and uh, add more fields. This plus column here is I can sort the label, I can enter my form, text box. It's very 
pretty simple. So if I click on label, sort of label, it places on the form automatically for me that I can move that around where I need to. So it's drag and drop. So if you're an accident developer, you're very familiar with this kind of methodology, you'll feel right at home. All right. So a couple of things. The common data service is what they used to be called, CDS. Now it's a uh, Dataverse. So they haven't updated this interface yet to the new terminology. When you see common data service, think Dataverse. All right. Now there's a couple of things that you'll notice right away, and that is um, I've got already tables here, such as client contacts, client info, connection info, inspection day. I can click on see all the tables, and I see more things, inspection, security data. These are data that I already have that we use in other apps that can easily integrate with this application I have now. With a, a way for me to leverage uh, other applications that we created and their tables into this one. So you hold over that, you've got the name of the table, and it still says uh, common data service. Now, a couple things. First off, if you want to leverage the SQL Server that you have in your current workplace, or a SQL Server you have in the cloud, in Azure, right? In my case, you know, this is where a customer asks us to design an application for them. Well, they already have an Azure SQL Server. They wanted to use uh, Dataverse, but now you want to be able to mix and create those rich applications back and forth. You have to create what's called a connection to that uh, to that data source in the cloud, and that's a premium connection. It costs ten dollars a month. And so, what Microsoft ideally would love you to do is purchase that connection for all your employees. So, if you have a thousand employees, you know that's ten dollars a month. That's ten thousand dollars a month that you'll be paying. But you don't have to really pay ten thousand dollars a month. What you really need is to create one account. In this case, we created the account for the client that uh, is called uh, a service account with a password. And that account is the upgraded license for uh, the upgraded uh, SQL Server connection. And it's called a premium connector. And they only pay $10 for one account. And that account then has access to the data design the app. You design the app under that account. And then you publish the app to your teams and you grant your teams access to the app. And now everyone in their company can use the app. Just a wonderful way of bypassing the licensing requirements. I mean, a pity for the people who are who are paying ten dollars a month for every every user, but it, uh, you really don't have to do that. Okay, so um, you probably see something similar to the access right? You have your properties here. This is pretty advanced here. Things here, and it's just I'm not going to go into form design at all, but. Uh, it's just uh, it's just uh, a um, easy an easy environment to learn, right? If you go into videos, and this stuff is constantly changing. I mean, from week to week, they're modifying things, adding new capabilities. The pricing changes. It's hard to catch up, and so we try to do that with YouTube videos and kind of working with MVPs in the end of space. And in fact, we hired an MVP that uh, helped us with that. Uh, that project. If I do have a project I want to show you, the first project I want to show you is a bot that we created uh, to automate this. And this is also using a premium connector. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, see a uh, tracker, so I, I, call, I invoke the bot by doing the word tracker. And then it asked me, okay, what do you want to do in terms of customers? Can we use this tracker to find how many hours you have available on each project? Because we pull out a project for so many dollars and so many hours. And the customer and the developer needs to know if you track, right? Because obviously, if you call the customer uh, 300 hours and you have uh, or you have 400 hours reporting, you're in of 100 hours. So you got to be careful with that. And so, so we create this tracker by to find out what this does. But this is actually with access. So the accounting team uses this bot as they upload the data to Azure using access by inputting it to QuickBooks. So it goes from QuickBooks to access, access to Azure. And then Azure, this bot is using a human connector to connect to Azure and create a database for the list of clients and you can have this interaction with the bot. So, um, for example, if I tell the customer and I enter a customer name, it's asking for a customer I want, and then I can say CSI, for example, 
and uh, comes back with uh, the results package. We have data and comes back for the results and see what comes back with data. It takes a little bit longer than I thought. We've been uh, fine-tuning this experience here for some bit. Not sure why it doesn't come back yet. But that's uh, that's something that we created for internal use. Another one we created for internal use is called the uh, Client Info app. This is a power app that we designed to store information regarding our clients' confidential information. So I got to be careful about what I do. So it was published by uh, us here. And let me just see here. Let me just quick stop sharing and make sure I don't uh, reveal anything that's compromising here. And then I'll be sure here in a second. Find an account that uh, doesn't have much there here. All right. So let me go through it. Projects. Now I'll share my screen here in a second. Okay. I found something I can share with you guys. So um, when you launch the application outside a channel, you see all the customer information. But if you're in the Bicycle Buys channel, which is a client of ours, it's the, um, you'll see, just show you that channel. So we have to we program that to read the channel name in the active project. So in order to be able to um, be able to go grab that record automatically. So anything I have out right here is the one thing that is curious about this power app is you click on the pencil to edit the data and now uh, I can do uh, this and then uh, click on the check mark to save it. So it's not um, it's not like access where you bring up the form and I'm like you can start editing data. You have to hit the pencil here, click to edit the data. And then if I want to cancel any data, just hit the X here. So that UI is already automatically included in the, in the uh, Power Apps. So this this took uh, someone who did never never designed Power Apps to create this application. It took her three days, which is a very short, um, very short learning curve. And uh, I commend her. She just loved it and dived into this right away. And we're we're going to exploit this. Not just for our use, for our clients to be able to do that. But what's interesting about this technology is it's uh, it's really available for your cell phone and your tablet. Like, so if I go ahead and create a power app and design it for the, for a screen, mobile screen, I can then display the same information on the mobile screen. So I can bring up power apps on my phone and then launch the application and automatically allows me to go in there. But now we have a means to be able to do that on the phone level, right? And so, for example, let's talk about uh, an application that I, that's near and dear to me, to my heart, called MBWA. And MBWA stands for Management by Walking Around, right? So if you're a safety manager at a large firm or a factory or a uh, organization, and you want to do a safety audit by walking around, that's why it's called MBWA, Management by Walking Around. And you walk around with a power app that you can record safety violations. So you walk around and you notice that there's a skid from the emergency exit, right? So you make the note of the violation. Okay, well, the, uh, the violation type is uh, is uh, uh, safety hazard. And then the, uh, the description of that is a skid in front of the exit door. And the description is, I, I went on, on this date and I found this skid of materials uh, of uh, PPD that was placed in front of the safety exit by blocking the exit, and it's not easily movable. <laughs> so those think about those fields, right? So it's the uh, safety violation type, the uh, the title of the violation, right? The uh, skin from the emergency door, the notes associated with that, the date and time can automatically be logged. I can do that on a cell phone or a tablet or an iPad, and then come back to my desk. And I'll find that safety violations with the department for resolution. So in that case, I can probably probably find somebody a supervisor in the immediate area have them both the case. Or I can assign that to a vendor if it's uh, over to engineering department to fix, right? If I see that, for example, there's a cable extension hanging from a ceiling that's not protected, I can log that in the MBWA app. But being able to do these uh, web apps in a very short time. And then be able to tap that data from Microsoft Access 
be able to do further things with it afterwards, after the fact, is really a game changer in my view because this stuff is super easy to put together and very resilient. Resil resilience, is that nice enough in there, right? Resilient? So that you can go ahead and uh, oh. be able to, uh, to do those kind of applications. My audio is a bit warmly. Are you using a separate microphone? All right, thanks, Ben. I thought, uh, how about now? Is this better? I'm just the mic. Ben, can you come to me better now? I don't know, Ben. Yeah, well, it doesn't sound like it's any different. Uh, did, you, did you engage that new microphone? No, I mean, uh, this is the same microphone I've always used when I, in our meetings and everything else. I'm surprised that we're having problems with it. Sorry about that. Yeah, you sound, it's hard to hear you. Oh, man. That's not good. Is anybody else having any issues with me, or is this just, uh, I'm just trying to figure out it's me, or if it's something else? That yeah. sounds a little garbled, Juan. It does sound garbled. All this time I've been talking, I've been garbled. <laughs> not <laughs> not Let me see if I can adjust my settings here. Which audio? Let's see, I got my I got a really nice headset. It's a Jabra UC voice. And uh, I'm really happy with this headset. This is the first time I had problems with it. All right. Let me see, let me stop sharing so I can go in my settings. Oh yeah, switch audio. Let's see. No, I want to do that. Let me check my audio settings real quick. Audio settings real quick. All right. Check that out. All right. I took out remove background noise. Is this better? It does sound like it's on the same microphone. Well, no. Tap, tap on wherever your microphone is. It's here. Tap. No, we don't hear anything. How about now? Nope. Nada. No, no. I mean, this, okay, well, that's not good. I got the uh, system job, bro. Let me change here. I'm making a change here. Test, test, test. All right, how about that? Much better. Tap on it just so we know. Yeah, that's it. All right. Okay. All right, let's start from the game. My name is Juan Soto. Right. We'll go ahead and continue with this. Any questions so far about uh, Dataverse and uh, Power Apps for Teams? You mentioned something about SQL Server before, but I didn't quite catch it. So the ability to be able to use SQL Server with your Power Apps, that's considered a premium connector. So if you Microsoft wants you to buy a premium connector license, which is $10 a month, now, most organizations don't realize this, but you don't have to buy it for everybody. You can just buy it for one user, and that user has the ability to design apps and connect with SQL Server and then publish that app in turn to the rest of the team. So you could have a thousand person organization and just uh, get the, pay the $10 a month, and now you're tapping into SQL Server, and then you can roll that app to your, to the rest of your team. Okay, so. And you could do that through Teams? Yes, so you get the Power Apps license from Teams. So here, uh, let me show you that. Let me bring up my uh, Azure licensing portal so you can see that. Give me a second while I bring that up. And let me share my screen again. So here, um, I'm going to go into user management. And I'm going to search for that service account. So we created a service account called IT Impact services service and this is the user that we assigned the license to for that premium connector so here if i if i go to um uh i don't think this is it now search for it again let me go to users active users IT impact. Uh, service, yeah, this one, service account, okay. 
So we create this with a special account. It doesn't. It's not assigned to any, but they have the uh, team's license, and then they have the connector. And uh, we give it the logo that we use for the uh, COVID uh, database. Well, license and applications. And if you review this, we got the uh, Microsoft Power, Microsoft Power Automate free Office 365 E3 license, which is typical. Auto Automate per user plan. And then here, if we go down to these apps, let me see if it shows up here. Microsoft Teams, Offer the Play, Automat, Virtual Power virtual Agents, and for this. This is not easy to figure out. Give me a second here. Because there's another way I can go in there to find that out. Let me guess, every few months they change the interface. They change everything. Right now it's called Common Data Service. Uh, automate Power User Plan, Office 3, Power Automate. It's changed on my Power Plan 2. Let's see. All right, let's go somewhere else. Let's do the billing. Licenses. Let's see here. Azure Business Apps. I only have one license, so let me go by available licenses. Bar H and Bar BI. Well, actually, we got the free trial for 38, so there may be more than one license. Let me just look through these. Uh, let's see, Azure Business Apps, Dynamics, it's not, Enterprise Mobility, Intune, Privacy Plan 2 Trial, is there more to this? No, let's see, your products, let's see my products. Indication credit. Azure Directory. Power Virtual Virtual Trial. Power per user plan. Let's see what this is. So I've got one assigned. And it brings more value to subscription. So we have to buy this license, Power Automate for User Plan, so that we can then tap into the, uh, it's $15 a month, this is not it. Twelve sixteen. okay. Viral trial. Yeah. We have to buy that license. See, if you if you run into problems with this, I can get my uh, my engineering team involved. If we can walk you through, if need be. Let me see. Enterprise mobility. They really don't make it easy, but um, you know we we not, I know we had, end up costing me ten dollars a month. I signed that to this user. So let me go back to that user, active users, and look at that. Okay, let's listen to the apps. Manage subscriptions. So three subscriptions are on trial. It might still be on trial. We start to we start paying for it after the trial, which is a nice thing. You can you can you can get a trial license and then use it for thirty days and stop using it afterwards if you don't want to pay for it. Uh, I don't see common data service. It could be this. Power Automate per user plan, the common data service, it could be that. Well, right now. I have to check where this common data service. I just unchecked it. All right, don't want to change that. I don't see anything that jumps up. I mean, I, this, this is, you know, I'm the president of the company. I have to authorize a $10 charge. And so I saw at the time that we configured it, I saw it and... Now it's hard to go there, but that's the way that you want. You want to be able to uh, buy that license, and now you can integrate SQL Server into your Power Apps, or create these Power Apps and uh, roll it out to your individual teams. I think this is. I, I just love this whole premise of being able to 
leverage my Microsoft expertise and be able to uh, leverage that low code capabilities to be able to create these applets and be able to expand the capabilities we have with our clients to really uh, turbocharge it. And, uh, you know, I, the reason I wanted to talk to you guys today is what the difference is now. It's called Dataverse instead of CBS and show you some of the things that we were doing to make it easier. One thing that um, I learned the other day, the other, just a couple of weeks back, is the profile capabilities in Edge. So here I can log in here and I have different profiles. I got my personal profile. I got uh, another user, that another company that I, that I own. Here I can go to uh, the other profile, so I can have multiple profiles. The nice thing about that is it saves, it captures my password, so when I'm in the IT input profile, I don't have to constantly log into Azure. Because so think about what normally people do is, if you have two profiles, a personal and a Microsoft, a Microsoft personal profile and a company profile, you have to manage between the two. But here, I have to save down here in the bottom of my taskbar, so I can go to my personal profile which has here and then now I can log in and see my my uh, my um, Azure MVP subscription which I get a hundred dollars a month for free as an MVP and do um, and see all my benefits for MVP from a from a personal perspective and then launch the other browser with that profile so I encourage you to create multiple profiles in edge it's a great way to be able to handle this and that was helping Ben who you heard earlier um, with this concept to help him separate his uh, uh, company profile, but teams with uh, I, uh, with the vendor he has, as opposed to, uh, to where his own profile with his company. So you keep them separate, and it's not foolproof. I know Ben was having problems with it, and earlier earlier this week. So I'm not sure if it's still working for you or not. But hopefully, we'll get better at doing that. Be able to separate the two so that you can have password saved in one and not inter not not conflict with the password saved in the other. So one of, the, one of the things that we're leveraging here is Microsoft Bookings. If you've never seen Microsoft, it's just a really good service. With Microsoft Bookings, I can have a booking page. Let me go back to my IT Impact profile. This is real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. When I go to bookings.office.com, this is where I can send you a URL and you can book time with me. And I have multiple offerings. I'll show you that in a second. So I go to my services page, and I have a, an introductory call that's 15-minute duration, right? So now when I go home here, my booking page, excuse me, and I copy this. Let me copy this. I can put, open this page, and then I can send you this URL, and you can book time with me. So, for example, the next available sign for I have for this 15-minute call, this is a campaign that we have ongoing with LinkedIn right now where I pay a service called Copilot to get more leads and, and LinkedIn, I can click on that day. And I see there's two sign slots that I can click on 3.30 and then reserve it. And this is already included free with your Office 365 subscription. So if your administrators can let you, you can create a service where you can book time with outside parties in your company. Because inside the company, people can bring up your calendar and book you up with you, right? They can see your calendar. But outside the company, this is a great way. And they can add their details. And they can even get uh, text messages if I want to. After I enter the phone number, just a wonderful way to have this. And in my case, I have multiple service offerings. I've got the 15-minute call. I've got uh, another service offering here for COVID Supplies Database, where we launched that product and we want to offer them a one-hour, one-hour um, uh, to anybody who wanted to learn more about the code using the COVID Supplies Database of their service at their company. So we established that. So it's just a great way to have different kind of services assigned to different kind of staff so that uh, you can then send somebody a URL and they can just book time with you. So if you ever never looked into it, look at bookings.office.com, uh, create your services and your page, and you can start using that URL with um, potential clients or other colleagues or other companies. It's a great way of doing that. All right. So... Uh, we had to change the topic to today's meeting because we were going to talk about some completely, completely different. Unfortunately, it's not ready. It's a, it's a huge surprise that we're working on that uh, we're hoping to be able to launch uh, next month in January uh, or even earlier than that. We'll see. We might even uh, launch it at uh, 
uh, lunchtime later on this month. Uh, but we'll see if we can launch it before that. But we have an amazing concept that's going to help everyone on this call with their Microsoft Access. And uh, it's going to be part of Access User Groups worldwide. And we're hoping it increases traffic to Access User Groups and get more penetration and more people on these calls and be able to grow the organization even more. So um, I was I'm really bummed out it's not ready, but I'd rather wait and make it ready before I come out and uh, show it to you guys and it's half-baked. Right now it's half-baked in the sense that it's still not ready, but we've been doing a lot of testing, beta testing with it. And uh, I'm hoping that I'll be able to show it to you in our next meeting and you guys can help me promote it. That's the whole, whole point of this, so you can help me promote it and expand it and publicize it on the web. I think it's going to be an amazing tool for the access community worldwide. Yeah, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And uh, I'm really bummed out that I can not show it to you, but I'm hoping that we can do that next month, um, either uh, with me or this month, later on this month, with Maria or Dale from Access ET. We'll, we'll either launch it later this month or early next month. But, man, I'm, I just can't wait to show it to you guys. It's just gonna, it's going to be a real time. It's fun. I can't believe you shot me. All right. Any questions before we go? This is pretty much it for me. Any questions? We got a power apps. Dataverse. Well, thanks a lot very much for everyone for showing up tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, I will see you again in the second week of uh, second Tuesday in January, which will be January. I bring up my schedule. January the 12th. Tuesday, January 12th. So long, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.